Hi, my name's Jim McCarthy. I'm a graphic novel writer, illustrator and comic book artist. And we're going to be talking about Death Rap, Tupac Shakura Life, published by Omnibus Press Music Sales of London. The Tupac book, obviously there was commercial considerations with the book. It seemed to fit the graphic novel format quite well. And even though I've heard um, through speaking to the publishers that actually sometimes black or African-American artists don't always sell that well in graphic novel terms. I think Tupac was quite a sure bet. My interest in Tupac is I've had a lifelong love of soul music, R&B, and, and that has led to certain interests in rap, particularly early music by Public Enemy. The book itself was also of interest to me because of my interest in um, African-American civil rights. When I was a kid, I was hanging around with a lot of Jamaican people in London. And we used to go to Free Angela Davis rallies in London and that when I was about 14 or 15, which was quite kind of hip thing to do back then. Tupac Shakur's mother, for example, Efeni, I think her real name, given name was Alice Crooks, was also a member of the Black Panther Party. And um, during the book, or during the writing of the book, it was very important for me to try and inject some of that kind of politically charged culture into the book. I didn't want to just tell Tupac uh, Shakur's story um, apart from that, I felt, I felt it was very intertwined with what happened before. But what I also found was the, a, a kind of a degeneration of African-American culture as well, where in the 60s and 70s it was civil rights and say it loud and black and I'm proud. And that had kind of evolved into kind of gangster rap, really, which he kind of got involved with by being involved with Death Row Records and Shug Nights. So the book really shows, unfortunately, how that kind of culture overtook him in a way. And perhaps, although it's not quite obvious, how maybe he got involved in um, a drug culture and East and West Coast rivalries with gangs and how that actually led to his death. Also, with writing a graphic novel like this, it was very important that the artist Flame Boy that drew this book, we wanted to try and get the ending of the book to kind of speed up a bit visually. So what we did, was, I think, taking the cue from the end of... Uh, Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, where the film starts to, as the, as the main kind of hero becomes more coked up, the film starts to get faster and jaggeder and more speeds up in time. So I wanted to try and get that feeling of the last couple of days of Tupac's life where he actually does get shot several times in a car where Shug Knight escapes, but he gets riddled with bullets and then subsequently dies. I liked um, the way Flame Boy use quite a limited colour palette on this book. You know, sometimes I think artists can make black people look a bit European. I think he's really captured the ethnicity really well in, in the drawings and um, lots of the little touches of hip hop culture, like, you know, the way Tupac wore his bandana back to front, knotted at the front, the jeans, the use of kind of very high end suits for court appearances and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff is very important. The details, the visual details, the kind of T-shirts, the chains. It's always really important in all these books to get the details right. That, for example, to me, a page is where somebody's using space really, really well. For example, not having to fill every area with, with art, actually leaving white spaces, dropping the captures into white art. I believe that was art directed to him like that. But the way he's done it, as far as I'm concerned, is just really really excellent if you can see that properly there and also just the color palette going into red with all the violence was another deliberate visual um aid to to really emphasize the just the shock and the kind of very sudden violence of of, of, of what happened to tupac when he got shot at a party in new york one of the great things for me about writing graphic novels is it's like writing a kind of very intense film script, probably more, probably written a lot more than a film script in places, but with added art direction for the artist. So, and it's always interesting to work with artists because I, my background is comic art, that um, it's interesting to see what they're going to do with the, art, with the art direction. And sometimes it's always really great if actually somebody supersedes what you've actually put in the art direction and they come up with something that's just so much beyond what you thought. And that's kind of one of the thrills sometimes of working on graphic books with artists.